Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the East Riding of Yorkshire series. Together with the unparished city of Hull, it forms the county of the same name. There's 172 parishes here. Which one are we in today? Welcome back to the East Riding of Yorkshire, everybody. Now, last week you saw North Cave. Well, this is its southern counterpart. I've literally just driven from HMP Humber, which is where I ended that episode, and I've come down into South Cave. And uh, on the way, I've passed quite a few things. I've passed uh, a surgery, I've passed uh, an MOT center, there was a plant center, all kinds of things along that road there which are not on today's route. But it doesn't matter, at least I've mentioned them. Uh, this route has got quite a lot on it. I've got to cross a golf course uh, on my way around this one, which is gonna be interesting. I'm hoping there are no errant golf balls in the air, ones that'll knock me on my head as I walk past, but uh, it's, uh, it might be the wrong kind of weather for golf anyway today. Anyway, our start point is Pinfold outside a cost cutter, which is also gonna be the end point because after this route, which will be quite long, I think I may well need some food. Welcome to South Cave, everybody. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Welcome to the much larger of the two cave twins in the East Riding of Yorkshire. This is South Cave, noted for being the site of Cave Castle and a golf club of the same name. South Cave sits approximately 14 miles to the west of Hull, chiefly on the A1034, just to the north of the A63 at South Cave Services. The parish is formed by the village of South Cave, the hamlet of Druton, and a very small part of Ripplingham, most of the latter falling within neighbouring Rowley. Officially a village now, South Cave formerly had a town charter that's lapsed and the parish council no longer styles itself as a town. The first reference to it as a market town was in 1156. Because of that fact, at points in its history, it's been known as Marker Cave or Market Cave. Much like North Cave, South Cave's name is a derivative of the word calf, meaning stream. It's listed in the Doomsday Book as just cave, lying within the Cave Hundred of the East Riding of Yorkshire. The Archbishop of York is known to have been a major landowner here in the 11th century. He was followed by Robert Mallet, Roger de Mowbray and Peter de Iville. However, it's the Barnard family who have perhaps the most well-known name in these parts. Interesting village this. Let's see if this is as interesting as North Cave was. Our route begins in a housing estate, and more specifically, Barnard's Drive. Barnard is the name of the family who once owned Cave Castle, and our first task is to discuss them, East Hall and West Hall, South Cave's two original country manor houses. Our route crosses Water Lane. There's a small footpath running alongside of this small meadow, which will take us towards another meadow just to the south of Church Street, and will emerge at the village primary school. At one time, a road passed through here, Bacchus Lane, but it was shortened by a man named William Eames who designed the grounds of East Hall, a building which would eventually be rebuilt as Cave Castle. The idea behind the road shortening was so that the view from East Hall was not obscured. 
Whilst East Hall became Cave Castle, West Hall was demolished in 1776 and the Barnard family would unite the two manors together. It's a little harder to film schools now the kids have gone back to school. Um, you'll have noticed that uh, in North Cave I uh, did that one in the car, that was by design uh, because uh, to be honest with you it's easier to mention a school when you're in a car as opposed to standing outside it but uh, yeah that's South Cave School anyway and in front of that we've got a library. Next to the school and the library we have South Cave Tennis Club which has two floodlit artificial grass courts. The courts were resurfaced in 2019. The club compete in the Hull and District Lawn Tennis League. These next two shots should have been the other way round. Across from the tennis courts you'll notice a lake if you look through some trees. That's Cave Castle's fish pond and it's a private lake. Next is the bowls club right next to the tennis courts. It might not be quite like the facility North Cave has but even so this is still a fabulous green. Cave Castle sits behind this housing estate off Church Street. It divides South Cave into two distinct parts. Here we're in the eastern end which is centred on the A1034. West End is believed to be the older part of the village. So I suppose this area is known as the Castle Estate. We've just come on to Castle Rise. Most of the streets on here are Castle something. As South Cave developed through the centuries, this easterly part of the village is where all the amenities sprang up. Church Street has lots of buildings which were originally used for other things. Take for example this chapel. This one is a Wesleyan chapel which was built in 1816. It merged with the primitive Methodist chapel which we'll see shortly in 1943. The words Wesleyan and chapel above its door appear deliberately defaced. Most of South Cave's modern amenities are in the marketplace, but there are odd ones along Church Street as well. Take for example this dental practice seen beyond these roadworks. Here's the other chapel. This is the old primitive Methodist chapel which was built in 1877. It was used for worship until 2005 when the society decided to join with the C of E Church. By 2013 it had been converted into a dwelling. So this was almost hidden in plain sight. Golden Jubilee WI 1965. I'm assuming that's the gate or potentially the building behind, I'm not quite sure. Anyway, it's the WI building. Next is an old school. Now don't shout at me if this isn't right. I could find very little about this but I assume that this is the former girls school. If so, it was erected in 1866 and it had an average attendance of about 60. It was supported by the Barnard family. Another footpath next known as Turk's Trod. Next to this there used to be a workshop known as Gibson's where South Cave show was held annually until the workshop was demolished in 1982. Its back doors opened onto a playing field. And here we are at that field, one of the 471 British playing fields established to commemorate the life and reign of King George V. They all have heraldic panels or other appropriate tablets near their entrances. In 1936, after the King's death, a committee set up the King George's Fields Foundation with the aim of promoting playing fields for the use and enjoyment of the British people. Okay, so that little trek across the playing field has brought us to, I think this is called Church Lane. I might have to just check my map for that because I'm not totally sure. Let's have a look and see what it is. No, not Church Lane, Bacchus Lane, Bacchus Lane, that's what this is. And this leads to uh, the marketplace. And that's where the sort of meat of this video is going to be because uh, that's where all the shops and important things are. And um, really, that's sort of um, what I base this route on because a lot of South Cave, as you've seen already, is quite residential. Uh, and are up new houses going up all the time. I mean, look here, we've got uh, some being built here. There's one behind this house here that's growing, going up as we speak. 
and on the other side of the main road which we'll hit in a moment that's all residential generally as well and it's not really very helpful to my route because there's a lot of dead ends nothing that really makes any sense to walk to i'm sure if there are some things across there you guys will tell me that uh, the, <laughs> that uh, there is but uh, for the time being that's not going to be walked around or spoken about when i hit the main road in a moment we'll take a left turn and head up towards the golf course via the marketplace there we go look washington garth some new houses going up there so uh, yeah let's keep going Bacchus Lane, by the way, was also known as Bakehouse Lane, and it used to run to Water Lane, as we discussed earlier. Off it, we find an assisted living residence called Orchard Court. Now we hit the main road through South Cave, the A1034. As a market town, South Cave is believed to have been very important. It lies on a trade route, and at one time, it had as many as eight or nine inns. In fact, it was so important that in 1668, one South Cave tradesman even issued his own halfpenny token. The marketplace once had a set of stocks, which were removed in the late 19th century. South Cave is also known to have had a set of gallows too, located on Gallows Flat. Just had to wait quite a while to get across this road. It's quite a, quite a busy road, this. And uh, I've come across the road because there's two things I've spotted. Firstly, the old red phone box. I want to see what's in this. And the answer is, uh, it looks like an information point. Let's have a look. Ah, so basically it's just a, a parish notice board. Um, yeah, nothing much more than that really. Uh, I'll put a card on this. And uh, also, Marketplace Farm is the other thing I noticed here too. It's just behind it. Apparently it sells free range turkeys. This old map, which was very informative, can be found at Marketplace's junction with Beverly Road. It's worth a read, although a lot of what's on it is in this very video. You could say, I've saved you a job. Pubs, and there are a lot less than there once were here, but there's still a couple left. One of them is the Bear Inn, a typical village pub. To the rear of this is a large function room incorporating a small but comfortable conservatory area. Opposite that we have the Town Hall. This building was formerly the Market Hall. It was built in 1796. The first floor council chamber was the rent room until 1841 when it was converted into a boys school room. Here's an interesting story. The Victorian brass bell from the chapel in South Cave Cemetery was stolen some decades ago. However, it mysteriously reappeared having been painted black at the back of a cupboard in the Town Hall in 1992. We've got a couple of other things, just passing the Trinity Bar and Kitchen. On the other side of the road, there's a vet. That's the Wixton Veterinary Group. Bonus points if you can tell me where, where we've seen one of those before. Test your memory. I'm just going to take shelter under this arch for a second because it's starting to rain. Over the road, we've got the Fox and Coney. That was mentioned on the uh, information board a few moments ago. Sorry, Mr. Postman. I think it is going to throw it down in a moment. We've also got the hideaway, that's a nail salon, Jones Funeral Directors. People like to see what uh, is, is in which shop actually, to be honest with you. I've, I've noticed that as I've been traveling around. On the other side, the other side of the Fox and Kona, we've got Morgan's, which is a, a barber shop. Editions, that's another hair salon. And this is sort of coming to an end now. These are all residential properties pretty much okay now my route takes me along this road up towards the entrance to the golf course and uh, the rain is kind of a blessing in disguise because it means the golfers won't be out so uh, yeah across that and we're heading starting to head back now to where we began our next landmark is this, the Dower House, which dates from 1870, and it was built by the Barnards, but it was never actually occupied by the family. The road name, by the way, has changed to Station Road. Like North Cave, Station Road is so named as South Cave Railway Station on the Hull and Barnsley Railway served the village between 1885 and 1955. Also along here, we have this, one of the elaborate gatehouses to Cave Castle. 
Next is the cemetery. By 1872, the churchyard at All Saints Church, which we've yet to see, had become overcrowded, so the Barnards donated this patch of land for a new burial ground, which was consecrated in 1873. The grounds were extended in 1967, with a further extension consecrated in 2011. The chapel within is unusual because it has red acorn roof tiles. Both it and the lit gate, which I sheltered under out of the rain, were designed by Smith and Broderick. Well, usually the rain doesn't bother me, but this has come down quite quickly. Um, so I'm just going to wait it out underneath the lit gate here at the cemetery before we attempt to cross the golf course, because there'll be no shelter on that. And I'm on it for quite a while. It's quite a large golf course, so... Um, yeah, I'm already soaking wet. <laughs> if anything, I probably should have walked this route the other way. This is Cave Castle Golf Course, which is situated to the north of Cave Castle itself, meaning we see this before the actual thing it's named for. It would appear the rain did not deter the members of this golf club. They were still out whacking balls down fairways towards greens. Here's one particular golfer in this next shot whose ball came just a little too close for comfort. I hope he found his ball, it went a long way into the trees. Cave Castle Golf Club has continued to mature and improve since opening in 1989. Described as having a natural beauty by its own website, the course is regarded as one of the best golf courses in Yorkshire. So the rain appears to have stopped now. It hasn't deterred the golfers, has it? They're, uh, they're still out doing their thing. Um, the footpath's way markers have disappeared, um, but I am still on it. Um, because I've got a couple of maps which show me I'm in the right place. Uh, it sort of bends now to the left and uh, heads for the entrance. So uh, let's get out of here before any more golf balls come my way. Well, we might be away from the golf club, but we're not quite done with Cape Castle because we're yet to see the actual building. Next, we have the church on Church Hill. This is sited next to the parish office. That's the building you can see in shot right now. The church dedicated to All Saints was mentioned in the Doomsday Book. This has features that date back as far as the 12th century, however the tower is 15th and the chancel was built by the Barnards in 1847. The oldest surviving feature here is its Saxon font, which indicates that the church was here during pre-conquest times, although there's no documentary evidence to support this idea. Fascinatingly, the church has something called an escape tunnel, which dates from at least 1791, and it runs to Cave Castle, which is located pretty much next door. I wonder, what would that have been used for? Unlike its uh, northern counterpart, South Cave's church is uh, locked at the moment, so we can't get in and have a look. That's a little bit disappointing. Cave Castle, built in Gothic Revival style between 1797 and 1804, is a Grade 2 listed building. Today it operates as a hotel and country club with gym facilities, and its grounds form Cave Castle Golf Club. There was, however, an ancient fortification on this site mentioned in the Doomsday Book, and many fine buildings have existed here in between times. It was in the possession of the Barnard family until 1925. It's said that John Washington, the great-grandfather of George Washington, the first president of the United States, lived on Cave Castle Estate prior to emigrating to America. Outside the entrance to Cave Castle, fittingly, is a war memorial. Towards the end of World War II, Cave Castle was used as an officer's mess, and a barracks built in the grounds housed prisoners of war. It's been a hotel ever since then. So now we've taken a left turn off uh, West End, down Beck Lane, and here's the Beck, a small bridge, there we go. And this footpath that the, uh, the Beck runs under takes you back to um, the uh, housing estate where we began earlier. Uh, I'm not uh, going down there though because um, my route is to finish along West End and end up at the shop which we 
saw at the very beginning. So uh, a few more paces and we will be around South Cave. The last section of the walk sees us head back along West End, and there's a few more things of note up here. On the corner of Northfield Close is a hair salon, Sally Ann's, which used to be called Passion's Hair Design. Hidden away off West End is another chapel. This is the Congregational Chapel, which was built in 1873 on the site of an old one. The congregation dates from 1662, and both dates are mentioned in the stone tablet in its south wall. Over the way is West End Cafe, which is highly recommended by visitors and locals alike. From home-baked pastries to handmade cakes, you're spoilt for choice of what to satisfy your soul with here. And lastly, we're back at Pinfold, and you don't need to be a genius to work out why it's called that. There was one close by. According to the old map in the marketplace, South Cave had at least two of them. And as main walks go, that's it for South Cave. Have we finished with this episode yet though? No, of course we haven't. <laughs> Gonna hop into the car now and take you out to the east of the village where there's something mightily interesting called Mount Airy. So here we are then at uh, Mount Airy. Can't go any further than here. Mount Airy Farm, private road. There is a footpath though, which I'm gonna walk up a short way. It'll take us towards what Mount Airy is all about. It's an airstrip and I'm hoping to get a good shot of it. But I'm not gonna stay here too long because this road is quite narrow and I don't know if there's going to be anybody coming up it or down it or whatever and there's not really anywhere to park that is the best I could do there's uh, no parking spaces you're definitely on the wolds out here look at these hills fabulous if the weather was a bit nicer this would look quite nice I would have thought right now anyway let's go up this path and see if we can find Mount Airy the public footpath up to Mount Airy branches from the Yorkshire Wolds Way, which passes to the east end of the village. Mount Airy Airstrip can be found at the top of the hill that this path runs over. Also sometimes called South Cave Airfield, Mount Airy is a private airfield. It's a relatively new airstrip compared to others we've seen. It's been here since at least the 1990s though, according to online records. It's lined with sheds on one side housing local aircraft. According to aviation experts, the approach when landing here can be tricky as the strip is on high ground. Crosswinds and the many trees around it can cause a few problems. Make no mistake about it, Mount is definitely right because the hill that I've had to climb up to get to this is extremely steep and now I've got to walk back down it again uh, in order to pick up the car and uh, there's only really one more thing I want to do with South Cave I need to get some petrol anyway you might remember the uh, Elica episode a long long time ago last year where I featured South Cave services which as you remember is right on the border between Elica and South Cave and uh, I'm basically just going to drive through the rest of South Cave, the bit you haven't seen, from Mount Airy down to those services and hit the A63 and then the M62 and that will be South Cave complete. But uh, before I do that, I think you know what's coming, don't you?
So for the rest of this video, we're taking a leisurely drive down to South Cave Services, first by driving down the aptly named Steep Hill, where I parked for Mount Airy. After that, Beverly Road takes us back to the marketplace and the A1034. From there, heading south, the road becomes Bruff Road and heads to South Cave Interchange, where the services and the Wonder Home Caravan dealership we met back in Ellica are located. I'm going to use this section to mention a bit about Druton, seeing as we haven't been there. Druton literally means Druid's Town. Located there is a large stone monolith called St Austin's Stone. Druton was supposedly connected with Druid worship and was the place where St Augustine preached to the Saxons, although no record exists of the saint ever visiting Yorkshire. Druton Manor, built in stone in about 1850, is at the centre of the Druton estate, which includes residential buildings, gardens, a lake and a farm comprising 1,138 acres. The estate, which today holds game shoots, was valued at £6 million when offered for sale in 2004. In 1892, Druton was recorded as a joint township with Everthorpe and it covered 2,114 acres. The settlement was the location of the South Cave Railway Station on the Holland Barnsley Railway, which we mentioned earlier. I don't really need to voice over the rest of this part, so for the next while, just enjoy the ride down to the services. After picking up some fuel, I was off on my way onto the westbound A63, leaving both the cave twins behind. Let me know in the comments which one of the two did you find more interesting. I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiot. This has been the Parish of South Cave, and I'm out. <laughs>